Sammy wouldn't deny it, bless his heart, he would hear it. How were many sort of smokers in the team? Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I think there was more smokers than non-smokers. Mm. I mean, he says it's going to add up and the yeah. sportsmen and the smoke would be very, yeah. very I, I would think mm. that one, one time in my career, I reckon I smoked 50, 60 a day. Well, I didn't I, I, 
smoke. I, if I weren't up there in the night, I'd light a cigarette. Mm. Because you're a standing member. No, I didn't. Well, I wouldn't have been here now. Yeah, okay. Put it here, don't have I gave up my son. He came home, he was in the Merchant Navy, the one who's in Australia now. Mm-hmm. He was in the Merchant Navy and he came home on leave and he'd started smoking. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, Can I? I said, We mm-hmm. don't want He said, Dad, if you pack up, I'll pack up. Mm-hmm. So I said, All right, I'll never smoke another cigarette. Mm-hmm. And I had a pack of the 20 with about 14 and I gave them to a mate of mine, an old boy, mm-hmm. in the pub down the bottom of the road here. And I never mm, had a cigarette in my mouth since. Mm-hmm. Well, they were turned threatens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I packed up football round about the same time. Mm-hmm. And I went from about 12 stone to 15 one. <laughs> That's true. And I, I've taken most of it off. I still wear about 13 stone. Mm-hmm. But uh, I can carry that about for me. Because it was like 11 years, I just stopped a week over that, stopped and that's it. Yeah, you never want to. I'm not going to smoke all my life, 27's a good time to stop. You know, yes. Well, that, uh, it, you, you'll find. How long have you packed up? Well, it's a week. A week? It's a week. A week. When you'll find you'll have a lot of feelings mm. oh, yeah. about smoking. Mm. You'll go and sit in the toilet, and I don't know when you used to smoke in the toilet. But you'll be sitting there and think to yourself, God, I've got another cigarette. In the bar, yeah, it's another, another place. Or after a meal. In the bar, or after you've eaten. Mm. They are the, mm. the main places because invariably people take the paper in the toilet mm. and sit there and smoke and mm. read the paper. Yeah. But, uh, but after I gave up, I had bronchitis. Good. Mm. They thought I was going to die. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. If that's bronchitis, it won't be any more. I was, never, I was never a 50 or 60 a day person. I was never a 20 a day. When you take me, they, in, in my scrapbook here, mm. indefatigable, and, and, and all that's me. Mm. Yes, it's my like father. That was drink, you know. Mm. But I didn't run after women. Mm. That was never a pain in my mind. Mm. I got married young, I was satisfied, and and I think that a lot of... Did your wife come from his passport? No, child, man's yeah. own room. The village. Right, right, right. Oh, the village. <laughs> oh, that was... Right outside her house. Mm-hmm. She'd just been to... She was 15, yeah. and she'd just been to uh, gym classes or something. Mm-hmm. And she, of course, she looked gorgeous. Cecil Davis looked at me. Mm-hmm. He said, don't you know her? I said, no, I don't. I'd like to. Well, I'll introduce you. So he walks the car. He didn't even let me know her. <laughs> but, but anyway, that started the ball off. And that was it. Did <laughs> she like football? Oh, no. She won't be particularly interested mm. in football. She still isn't. Mm. But among us. Mm. That's what put about old Bernard Joy. That's the combined services. Well, I've never even mentioned our faith for combined services. Mm-hmm. 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 So there were sort of immediately after the war when the war finished, there were a lot of these. Yes, yeah. That's all the hierarchy in Portugal. Mm-hmm. This is me with a, a cup. This is a cigar. This is his machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same ground, yeah. It's like a sesame, isn't it? Yeah, it's oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, 
Here's the three boys who went to. Three of them smoked. That's the first one I've <laughs> Did you get all these photographs? I mean, did you get to the, the press agents of the photographer's contacts and their plans? Or did you I don't know where they come from. This one appeared. Yeah. <laughs> they used to like to get well in with you, and they used yeah. to bring your photograph yeah. when they want another one. so many happy years there, but I and old, old George Green, we felt really sick, mm. you know. Poor old Derek after I felt sorry for him, because he was, he was in that state there. Mm. You see, there weren't many there with as many ties, as far as the directors were concerned, as, as Derek. Mm. Because I mean, he'd been a player as well as yeah, mm -hmm. a director. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He came there the year I finished, I think. Mm. Of course, they had a lot of South Africans after that, didn't they? Yeah. What's his name? The tall one. Come on in. The fullback. Back to Scotland, didn't he? Huey. Huey, yes, John, right. John Huey. Mm. He came down here, and who else? Because Sam used to come down here and we used to pick up a door, you know, mm -hmm. and it used to cost them sixpence or shilling, whichever it was, mm -hmm. to put these balls past Sam. He never used to want anything, he used to <laughs> come and I had a benefit match here and there was uh, 27 internationals <laughs> up there. <laughs> and I think that... Uh, there was only 4,000 mm. people there. Well, the ground wasn't holding them or anyway. Mm. Oh, they had a wonderful night. They all stayed up at the Cliff Hotel. Jimmy Hill was one. He was there. Mm. He was in charge of uh, the Fulham. There was old uh, the Cousy. The Cousy. Uh, four from Fulham. Charlie Midden. Brennan, Bobby Brennan, Where are they now? Common camera. Yes, have you read them? I haven't seen the ones in the movie. Haven't you? Well, I probably did years ago. That's all in the air. Some of these tales that I've told you are in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Charles in this case in 1934 when George Joplin attended a friendly match between Dawson and Alps Morris and the Forest Skipper at the time. Tommy Graham, Moffat Graham, and Trial of Forest, which he declined, but he accepted the similar invitation from Joplin. I'm 
got the fourth one, please. say he wasn't a bad, a good manager. Mm. I can honestly say, and if he was here, he'd have to bear me out, mm. that he never told me anything. In fact, he was always telling me I wasn't any bloody good. Mm. And then at the end of it all, he turns around and tells me he used to do that to gee me up because I'd go out there and beat them on my own sort of thing. Mm. But he told me this himself because when I played for Knox Forest, we played no more that, up the wall. And when I got there, Billy Joyce was his name. He was the manager then. He asked me to go upstairs into the boardroom if somebody wanted to see me. So, because I went up there, but I didn't know him. Shock me neither. Did you see it's sitting over a gas fire? Burberry, the coat on, the trilby, and he, we had a real old heart-to-heart -heart talk, and he told me what a good player I was. Oh yes, he was at Moon, he was at Moon, he was a director. I didn't even know he was there, and uh, that's what happened. And he got it, he said, I'll get it all off my chest, because he was an ill man. He was, he was often, he he the bottle. Oh yes, yes, he, oh, yes. He must have been like that when he was a child, because I don't think they would ever have got rid of him. Yeah. You know, all the while he was behaving himself. Mm. <coughs> and does the missing go very sudden the way he did? He did go. He did go yes, yes. Okay, yes. okay, they had the start of the season. They had four or five very bad results. Mm. Five, four, eight, four, whatever. Yeah. 
big, big losses. But they were still in the first division. But he'd never be able to take all that. Mm -hmm. He said that he never replaced me. Mm -hmm. He said that his team were never the same. Mm. And he said, I have to, I've got to take. Mm. I felt, I felt terrible after seeing him. You know, because he never did me any harm, really. Mm. I think all he did to me was look after himself. No, I, I would never have been any different. I would never have played any different. Mm. If he'd have come up on patting me on the back and gave me a bit of clean and gave me any credit whatsoever. Mm. In fact, he, I used to come down and play and he, he wouldn't say good afternoon. Mm. You know, maybe that was... I couldn't maybe that was just a personal thing that he had himself that he couldn't... No, but he used to be like that with most people. Mm. But he would, he would find it difficult to, to give out praise and to... Oh yes, I, 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 he, never, he never complimented people to any extent. Mm. No, never. You could also count, I suppose, to a certain degree, why, why maybe so few Charlton players made it to the international scene, because he, you know, when he had lots to keep to himself, yeah. and uh, be selfish with, with the talent he had at his disposal. I mean, he said to me, not once, but more than once, he said, you're not trying to bloody guard. Mm. No, it's not a nice thing to say to anybody, is it? And then I'd read the report in the paper the next day and I was the best man on the field. And I think mm. there's uh, something wrong here somewhere, isn't there? Mm. I think I was just reading here, so it's sort of just going to be saying this. Um, Brown, a 22-year-old player, has been with Charlton for four years, waiting for his chance. He looks like another winner for Jimmy Seed, and I think we should see a lot more of him. But the fact there's another winner for Jimmy Seed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. I, I couldn't understand that. Mm. Only, as I said, Les Bolter and George Robinson, and before Les Bolter, George Stevenson. Mm. Uh, and they were top of the league and winning every week. Mm. I, I didn't expect to get in. But mm. if any one of them got hurt, I expected to be in the running anyway. Yeah, but never to be mentioned that you'd find that Eric Nansloff goes in and Aaron Buck goes, uh, Locke goes in. Mm. Oh, another one was Aaron Buck. And he couldn't get in the reserve team. Mm. There was him, and there was another Geordie inside for him. Good looking there. They, they, they used to go in the team, but I was playing in the reserve team, mm. and they used to go away with the first team as reserves. Mm. Oh, it was strange. It was strange to me. Mm. And of course, then 1938, I think, Harold Buck. He went, Stan Pryor went, and this other inside forward went. And of course then, they never had many replacements. Mm. They had, um, was it Ralph Allen? Was he, was he, he was sent forward. Was yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, he came there after me, Ralph Allen. Uh, what's his name? He broke his leg, was sent forward when I first went there. Oh, he was a good player. Sir Pierce. Mm -hmm. He was a sent forward fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he was a good sent forward mm -hmm. Sir Pierce. But he broke his leg. Yeah, and then, uh, old oh, Dias lived before then. He'd gone to either Derby or the Villa. Derby, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I thought he played for Derby as well, but uh, I don't think he went to Villa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What about the swimming and the back and boys, the big things? Never saw much of them. Or, yeah. You never saw much of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that on it, you saw him quite a bit, but he never said very much. Mm -hmm. He went the sort who would uh, come into the dressing room and say, hello boys, and, you know, have a chat to people, mm -hmm. they just stand there and, well, just admire you, I suppose, mm -hmm. or whatever. But they could have seen they didn't see it to the other side of the story. No, they, they, they never spoke to anybody, really. Mm. If, you, if you did speak to other people, what would you recall? I don't know. 
No. Was there, Never. Some, was there a hierarchy? Mr. Albert and Mr. Stanley, I think they were mm. called. But I remember when I was in the boardroom and all there, I, I didn't call them anything. I could have called them quite a bit. <laughs> but I remember sitting next to Duke C. And uh, I was smoking his cigarettes. And Albert Lixton said, well, why is it you want to leave each other? Do you want money? Is your marriage all right? Is this, and, you know, because I told him I couldn't get my house back from the council. Because when war was declared, uh, there was a bomb drop in between uh, Sangwood Road, where I lived, and Ricklemarsh Road. It blew a bloody great tree out the ground. <laughs> and because my wife, she was off next morning, she went to March in Cambridgeshire to assist her. And uh, in council, requisition in my house. And they put all my stuff up in one room upstairs. And it was nice paid piece of people they put in there were very nice people. But then of course when the, the war was nearly over and I went down to Charter three times with the prime purpose of getting somebody to have a work with the council back and my house back. Otherwise I'm I'm off. And of course then ever ever after all I heard was that I couldn't get my house back in China. But there was a lot of other things uh, pending besides my house. And when I sat next to him and I was smoking his fags, and he asked me, oh, next enough, you know, why I wanted to go. I said, because I can't go on with him. And he's sitting next to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, dear, 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 you were all right. He says, he said, no. I said, yeah, you blushed. He knew it was true. And Dr. Moncom, he was sitting the other side. And he's a lovely little old bloke, he was. And he was saying, oh, well, I'm Because he brought my son into the world. Mm. I loved old Dr. Moncom. I, mean, I wouldn't upset him for anything. He said, but he broke, I broke his heart mm. when I left. He said, yeah, when the next time I saw him, he says, all the sparkle went out of the valley. When you left, I thought, I thought that was one. That was Dr. Montgomery. That was Dr. Montgomery. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've heard some, you know, a few people have said some very nice things about Dr. Montgomery. Yes. He was a local doctor. Oh, he was, he was, he was well known and loved by yeah. yeah. well, the local community. And there's yeah. one woman who, as a girl, was a great child of man, and then she's with that big crowd days. And um, on one occasion, it was her and her and girlfriend of hers walking along the road, and uh, Dr. Montgomery came. Came past in his car, opened the window and said, Go to the match? And said, Yeah, you know, get in. 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 Get vibration and we were sitting there <laughs> he'd only been there about 10 minutes and up he go he went to his dummy cabin he went to his bunk he said oh, I don't think that's what I think it's going to be enough to know we hadn't even left the deck still more to the key yeah oh yeah he couldn't live that down for a long time on that tour did you find that because obviously you must have known the players that weren't really quite very well by that time did you find that the sort of the, the attitude or the way people were acting was different to the way they acted generally when they were back home? No. Yeah. And sort of being free of wives and families and responsibilities for No, I, 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 I don't think there was any of them in the team that would go on the loose. Mm. They were very conscientious about the football. Mm. I mean, you always get a few scare them, scare them to the team, don't we? I think I were one, but I, women, no, my God, they found me in a restaurant. I don't know, I did that. And that was me singing to the, I was up at the piano. So I don't know what the hell I was singing. They came in there and they said, yeah, and there was all these people having their meals and that. You know, George Oblin was writing for the, uh, 
told of the comic cats. Mm-hmm. He was writing for some uh, journal or something, tidbits or one of them, something like yeah. that. And he had this all in there, and he said, there was that. Right, he said, we goes in this here restaurant for a meal. <laughs> we can sing it up. <laughs> no, no, they had a few. <laughs> yeah, they had, I was looked at his Jack Shreve, because mm. I was also Jack or Bill. Well, we called him that. We, there was five of us in digs together. Mm. There was Cecil Davis or Stinky, as we used to call him. Mm. There was Cecil Davis, Ralph Cullen, George Williams, Bill, and I. Bill came down here quite a few times. Met mm. my mum and sisters and that. Cecil came down twice. Mm. Cecil never got a gun. No, no, no. Yes. He, he was a, a good winner of, of Cecil. Mm. But he was, had all the actions, you know. Mm. But it never seemed to materialise. He, he, he seemed to have got slow instead of, you know, speeding mm. himself up. Mm. He, he played at one speed and it weren't quick enough. Mm. So when you joined the club, you were Diggs? Yeah. Yeah, I was in Diggs with Ronnie Thomas when I first went up there in uh, Western, Western Avenue. Mm-hmm. And when you got married, did you get a club house? No, no, I bought my own house up the same little road. Mm. 900 it cost. It's been sold 138,000. <laughs> I sold it to Charlton when I left. Yeah. I don't know whether they've ever sold it. Have they? Mm. Mm. All they've got now is their names one day. Mm. Mm. 